You know what time it is. It's Halloween, boys and girls. Yup. It's time for Hollowgate. Now, if you haven't seen this one, consider yourself lucky. Hollowgate is a notoriously bad movie. However, it does have its fans, and they tend to love it in spite of its many flaws. I am one such fan. Yeah, objectively, Hollowgate is a pretty terrible movie. But I'm here to convince you that Hollowgate might be the perfect Halloween movie for you. So sit down, strap yourself in, and let's find out why Hollowgate is a horror movie worthy of praise. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. The beginning of the film starts as most 80s slashers do, and that's with a backstory sort of setting up the scene to why our slasher villain is the way he is. Think of X-Ray, The Burning, The Prowler, Graduation Day, Pieces, and many, many more. We start at a Halloween party 10 years in the past. Mark, a young boy with an alcoholic father, gets abused in front of everyone. Now the candid moments here are great as it really captures that Halloween spirit, but it's all just a little awkward. It's clumsy. Like where is the dad sitting in order to see the actions taking place? The lighting doesn't really match. The room layouts don't look like they match either. It just doesn't feel right and there's a reason for that. These scenes weren't directed or written by Ray DeZazzo, but instead they were made by the producer. You see, writer-director Ray DeZazzo's finished cut of Hollowgate was just under 70 minutes. The producer was understandably upset that it wasn't theatrical length, so he went ahead and shot what he wanted. Ray DeZazzo wrote some treatments for the scenes that could be added, but outside of an abusive father, his treatments were ignored. The producer wanted more sex, violence, and an explosion. So that's why when we cut 10 years into the future, we focus on a couple fooling around. Wait. Why does it say Halloween night when it's clearly day? After the couple flounders through their groping scene, they drive off to their Halloween party, but of course, they need gas first. The gas station employee is the shy, socially awkward Mark, who everyone likes making fun of. The couple decide to harass Mark, and little Marky Poo here really takes after his father and tends to escalate the situation. And how does he do that? Well, he makes a Molotov cocktail out of their car. <laughs> and he just laughs about it. And that's not all of the producer scenes. Two years later, Mark tries to buy a cashier an ice cream, but she doesn't like ice cream. I don't like ice cream. Well, again, Mark snaps and stalks her and threatens her, but luckily she has a knife. We then cut to some men in suits talking about the case of Mark. They talk about the politics, if they should lock Mark up, or even if there's enough evidence to do so. Honestly, this is a long scene and it's rather dull, not to mention the horrid audio. Gross family doesn't want any part of it. John, don't do this to me. It's a little hard to follow, but what you need to know is that Mark is locked up in his grandmother's house now, and only she has the key. Mark is on some meds and has been doing much better. There'll be no more going without that. I've learned my lesson. So his grandmother decides to let Mark out on Halloween night, but oh no, Mark hasn't actually been taking his medication. Happy Halloween, you filthy old hag. This would have been the beginning of the Ray DeZazzo's cut of the film, and it would have changed the tone of the whole movie if the film started here. This house is a beautiful location, and it belonged to a friend of Ray DeZazzo, and we'll talk about that house soon enough. First, we need to visit our main cast. Some disposable teens are traveling to go to a big party in Oklahoma. First, they need to drink some beer and then visit a Halloween costume shop. Turns out that they don't have money, but the shopkeep would give them a free wig if they would go deliver an order to an old house for them. It's a big order, so the shopkeep doesn't want to lose out on that revenue. But again, it's Halloween night and it's a big day for the store, so he can't just close. The house isn't that far out of the way, so the teens take the deal and deliver the big order to the house. While on their way, they pull up to a big gated property and they have to use the intercom to get in. And whose house do we go to? 
Mark greets the teens and invites them in to show them around his big estate, and while looking through the house they stumble upon Mark's grandmother, who, let's just say, has seen better days. Obviously, the kids run away, but Mark has the keys to the car, so they run to the front gate, which is electrified. There's no way out, and the eccentric Mark decides to dress up in all of his Halloween costumes and kills the teens one by one. After each death, he puts on a new costume and hunts them down in a thematic way. And Mark really does go over the top with it. I love it! The changing of the costumes reminds me of Fade to Black a bit, but way more cheesy. Actor Addison Randall really hams it up here. Director Ray DeZazzo wanted a very serious film, but after seeing Addison perform, he thought that his interpretation of the character could work. Will the teens survive Mark's multiple costumes? Will the cops come to the rescue? What costumes will Mark put on next? And are the vicious, flesh-eating dogs actually just friendly golden retrievers? <laughs> Hollowgate is a mess of a film, but it's such a joy to watch. While the movie suffers from the typical trappings of other bad movies, like terrible acting, subpar directing, and low budget, Hollowgate more than makes up for its shortcomings with its charm and uniqueness. Like the idea of a Halloween-themed slasher dressing up in different costumes and taking on the personalities of who he dresses up as is genius. It's the most Halloween thing I can think of. I just wish that they went a little farther with it. An army man? Cowboy? It's a little too generic and stock for me, but still, it's a great idea. And even though we have a low body count, every one of our disposable teens has a personality and feels like a real person. You actually genuinely care for these characters, except for Kim. Once the crap hits the fan, she is useless. She just cries and goes into shock. God damn it, you quit, you quit this shit and talk. Will you just talk to me? Fucking talk to me! <laughs> Which I get is realistic, but it's rather annoying to watch, especially when she's the final girl. In most slashers, you have teens getting slashed, but either no one notices, or when a main character does stumble upon the body, they run away from it. There is usually very little mourning in these types of films, and that's usually for the better. But in Hollowgate, our teens focus on the death so much. It's not uncommon to have an extended scene of an actor crying about losing their friends in this movie. These aren't the greatest actors, so these scenes, while trying to be emotionally impactful, come across as awkward. Hollowgate is the type of film that you wouldn't be surprised to see an Alan Smithy credit, but writer-director Ray DeZazzo is proud of what he made. Even though it didn't lead to too much, he enjoyed his time working on the project, as how many people can say that they made a feature-length film? It was once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and he's glad he did it. If you ever want to watch this one, the TerrorVision Blu-ray is the way to go. TerrorVision is known for giving quality releases to less than quality films. The special features are to die for. You have two copies of the film here, the traditional film and one where they really cleaned up the footage. You have a few in-depth interviews as well as a shock tale hour with horror host Aurora Gorealis. She shows you how to make a specialty drink made specifically for this movie. And Aurora Gorealis is married to Chris LaMartina, the director of the WNUF Halloween special, which I covered earlier. Talk about a small world. I met him. While not a perfect movie, Hollowgate embodies the do-it-yourself type of Halloween film. It's inspiring and does a wonderful job of capturing the vintage Halloween atmosphere. It's one of the most unique Halloween experiences I can think of. It's like a car crash. It's bad, but you can't look away from it. So enjoy that wreck and happy Halloween, everyone. I hope it's a good one this year and I'll see you next time. Stay spooky, everyone.